So Bob, uh, you and I talked a bit recently during the Open RAN forum, but I had a few more questions around Open RAN interoperability testing and security. So I, I wanted to follow up with you in that regard. And, and just first and foremost, I was hoping you could help me understand what are the differences between 3GPP testing and ORAN testing? Uh, it's a good question. So 3GPP has been around a while and 3GPP's concept of the network is a, a closed RAN. So when they test, when they define a test, it is on a G node B, the, the RAN itself. It is the whole unit. Um, in, in ORAN, we've broken that out into three parts. There's a radio unit and it's a smart radio unit. There's a, a, a distributed unit and there's a central unit. Um, each of them has their own capabilities, um, which are not recognized by 3GPP. So if you just do 3GPP tests, you're only gonna test the whole unit itself. You, you don't test the part, the piece parts. Um, where ORAN, because it's broken things up and it has open interfaces, um, wants us to test each element individually and be able they, to ensure that they, they, that they conform to the standard. Now I can give you an example of this in, um, in 3GPP testing uh, for receiver sensitivity. What you do is you send a signal into the, into the G node B, the G node B processes it and tells you the block error rate. Um, part of that is done by the radio and part of that is done by the DU. So when you get a, a, an ORAN network where you have different vendors, DU and RU, um, that RU might pass receiver, the 3GPP receiver sensitivity test with one DU I might fail it with a different one. So um, I believe what's going to happen is 3GPP is eventually going to recognize that RAN gets distributed and have to uh, have to adapt their, their test to that. Okay, so that's the distinction between 3GPP testing and ORAN testing. So let's drill into ORAN. and Maybe you can help me understand the difference between ORAN conformance testing and then ORAN interoperability testing. Sure, this is something I've, I've seen a lot of customers get confused on. Um, they, they, so conformance test is to take each element of the network individually, surround it with emulators, and exercise it fully to the capability of, of ORAN. Interoperability test is to put them together and run an end-to-end -end test. And there's some very different things about that. When you test a radio, the radio has no concept of the upper layer stack of like the UE and the, and the network. So it doesn't know about the MAC layer or the PDCP layer, the RLC layer, it doesn't know that. So when you test a radio, you want to test it with a DU emulator that doesn't have all that stuff in it. It's just basically the physical layer. And what's also interesting about, about doing conformance tests on a radio is you have to be able to have a DU emulator that can set every bit or every byte, every compression scheme, every um, beam forming scheme, so you can exercise the radio fully. Um, and the other thing is um, ORAN protocol is a fire and forget protocol, meaning uh, the DU sends it something and it doesn't the, the radio doesn't respond. You just see it on the RF side. So you have to have tight coupling between the RF equipment and the, um, the, the, the radio itself. So if you, I, there are some people that, are, that advocate putting a full stack tester there but that's using test equipment to test test equipment, which seems kind of silly. Um, the, the DU has its own issues because it, it has, it's intelligent. So there is no way to make a DU exhibit all the capabilities that it's, it's supposed to be able to do. Um, and that's something we're struggling with in testing in conformance testing of, uh, of DUs. Um, so there was a, an option to put in test ports, which the vendors said they, they didn't want to do that. It adds cost and it, it's complexity. Um, so now we're working on just looking at the DU, letting it run in its native mode and just seeing what, what it does. CU, same way. So interoperability testing is, is usually or should be done after you've done the conformance testing because generally if you put a radio unit, a DU and a CU together, it's not gonna work um, the first time until you do all that testing, the conformance test part. Once you put them together, interoperability test is good for performance because now you want to see, does this combination perform well? So one without the other is, is not a good idea. And I, I do see some people that jump right into interoperability test and say, oh, if they work together, that's, that's fine. But that's like building a car out of untested parts. And if it starts, hey, we, victory, you know, it worked. 
And I also mentioned security. This is obviously a, a big sort of uh, point of discussion around open RAN. So, but when we think about uh, a disaggregated RAN where we have multiple vendors providing different pieces of that radio access network, then we also layer in that these pieces can be geographically distributed in a new kind of way and then add in the fact that the specifications are evolving at a pretty rapid pace. How does that change the logic around breach and attack simulation, uh, just given all of those moving pieces? So security is, is a very, very active part of ORAN right now. The working group one is the architecture group, and it has a security task force that's looking at this, and it's, it's, it's going pretty hard at it. Um, what, what they found, they, they started with the edge of the network. And what they found, as you would expect, the, the core of the network has the most sensitive data in it. So it, it's the, probably the, the um, highest risk, um, but it's the most trusted part because it's in a data center, it's protected, there's firewalls around it. Um, as you get towards the edge of the network, especially a distributed network, the risk goes down primarily because if you took something out, you take out one radio. Okay, that's not going to take down an entire network. In the core, you might take down an entire network with, with that. Um, so, so the risk goes down, but the trust goes down too. Um, so what they started looking at is what do they need to do to protect the distributed RAN, and especially on the front hall. Um, and what they've come up with is a few things. The, the management plane that, that configures the radios is, is already encrypted. So, so that one's safe, that, sh that should be pretty good. The, um, the user plane, user data is already encrypted. It's always been encrypted in 4G, 3G, it's always been that way. Um, so you, there's really very little risk of somebody compromising user data. Um, the control plane is the one that they're looking at right now and that has its own issues because that is a real-time protocol. Um, if you add encryption to it, you've got to do some processing. What type of encryption would you use? That, that's an issue. Um, and what they really focused on is the synchronization plane, because that can do a lot of damage. Um, in synchronization, there's a, 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 an algorithm that the radio uses to find the, the best master node. Um, that we put authentication on, which we didn't ha have before. Um, and we started looking at the PTP protocol itself. The problem with that is um, if you encrypt it, network elements that used to be called transparent nodes can't see the, the data anymore. So they can't adapt that. So, so it breaks the network. So encryption on the S plane is, is, is another problem that, that they're wrestling with, but they're doing a good job. They're, they're taking a good look at risks, vulnerabilities, where, where should we do this? And they're, I think they're being very reasonable about it. Uh, so Bob, based on everything you said, I mean, Open RAN is obviously adding a lot of, uh, a lot of dynamacy, introducing a lot of change into typical uh, test and validation procedures. So just maybe you could give us a high level look at how Keysight is quickly adapting to support their operator customers that are interested in pursuing Open RAN. Sure. Well, we have operator customers and we have network equipment customers and we're building emulators to, to do to basically emulate every part, part of the, the network. So you can surround a, a radio unit. Um, you can drive it every bit and byte. You can put any kind of waveform you want in it, 5G LTE. Um, and then you can see it on the radio side because we make spectrum analyzers, we make signal sources. Um, so we have, and we've also automated conformance tests. So um, one, one push test where you just push a button and it does runs through the whole conformance test. Um, we have uh, radio unit emulators that can, uh, can look like an entire UE stack to a DU. Now this, when you're testing a DU, that's important because the DU does have the full stack in it. And we have, uh, it's our U old UE emulator, but it's a radio unit emulator, which means it's not RF. You, you put it on like it was a radio unit and it, it'll test the, the, the DU. Um, so we, we've got a lot of um, work going on in that, in that area. Excellent, Bob. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, keep us up to date on how Keysight is approaching uh, Open RAN. Thank you.